Mrs. Caudle's Curtain Lectures by Douglas William Gerald, read for LibriVox.org by Martin Clifton. Lecture sixteen: Baby is to be christened. Mrs. Caudle canvasses the merits of probable godfathers. Come now, love, about a baby's name. The dear thing's three months old and not a name to its back yet. There you go again. Talk of it tomorrow. No, we'll talk of it tonight. There's no having a word with you in the daytime, but here you can't leave me. Now, don't say you wish you could, Caudle. That's unkind, and not treating a wife, especially the wife to you, as she deserves. It isn't often that I speak, but I do believe you'd like never to hear the sound of my voice. I might as well have been born dumb. I suppose the baby must have a godfather. So, Caudle, who shall we have? Who do you think will be able to do the most for it? No, Caudle, no, I'm not a selfish woman, nothing of the sort, but I hope I've the feelings of a mother. And what's the use of a godfather if he gives nothing else to the child but a name? A child might almost as well not be christened at all. And so who shall we have? What do you say? Anybody? Aren't you ashamed of yourself, Caudle? Don't you think something will happen to you to talk in that way? I don't know where you pick up such principles. I'm thinking who there is among our acquaintance who can do the most for the blessed creature, and you say anybody. Caudle, you're quite a heathen. There's Wagstaff, no chance of his ever marrying, and he's very fond of babies. He's plenty of money, Caudle, and I think he might be got. Babies, I know it, babies are his weak side. Wouldn't it be a blessed thing to find our dear child in his will? Why don't you speak? I declare, Caudle, you seem to care no more for the child than if it was a stranger's. People who can't love children more than you do ought never to have them. You don't like Wagstaff? No more do I much, but what's that to do with it? People who've their families to provide for mustn't think of their feelings. I don't like him, but then I'm a mother and love my baby. You won't have Wagstaff and that's flat? Ha, Caudle! You're like nobody else, not fit for this world, you're not. What do you think of Pugsby? I can't bear his wife, but that's nothing to do with it. I know my duty to my babe. I wish other people did. What do you say? Pugsby's a wicked fellow. Ha! That's just like you, always giving people a bad name. We mustn't always believe what the world says, Caudle. It doesn't become us as Christians to do it. I only know that he hasn't a chick or a child. And, besides that, He's very strong interest in the blue coats, And so, if Pugsby, now don't fly out at the man in that manner, Caudle, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You can't speak well of anybody. Where do you think to go? What do you say then to Sniggins? Now, don't bounce around in that way, letting the cold air into the bed. What's the matter with Sniggins? You wouldn't ask him her favour for the world? Well, it's a good thing the baby has somebody to care for it. I will. What do you say? I shan't. I will, I can tell you. Sniggins, besides being a warm man, has good interest in the customs. And there's nice pickings there, if one only goes the right way to get them. It's no use, Caudle, you're fidgeting about. Not a bit. I'm not going to have baby lost, sacrificed, I may say, like its brothers and sisters. What do I mean by sacrificed? Oh, you know what I mean very well. What have any of them got by their godfathers beyond a half-pint mug? a knife and fork, and spoon, and a shabby coat, that I know was bought second-hand, for I could almost swear to the place. And then there was your fine friend Hartley's wife. What did she give to Caroline? Why, a trumpery lace cap it made me blush to look at. What? It was the best she could afford. Then she had no right to stand for the child. People who can't do better than that have no business to take the responsibility of godmother. They ought to know their duties better. Well, Caudle, you can't object to Goldman. Yes, you do. Was there ever such a man? What for? He's a usurer and a hunks. Well, I'm sure you've no business in this world, Caudle. You have such high-flown notions. Why, isn't the man as rich as the bank? And as for his being a usurer, isn't it all the better for those who come after him? I'm sure it's well there's some people in the world who save money, seeing the stupid creatures who throw it away. But you are the strangest man. I really believe you think money a sin, instead of the greatest blessing. 
for I can't mention any of our acquaintance that's rich, and I'm sure we don't know too many such people, that you haven't something to say against them. It's only beggars that you like, people with not a shilling to bless themselves. Ha! Though you're my husband, I must say it, you're a man of low notions, Caudle. I only hope none of the dear boys will take after their father. And I should like to know what's the objection to Goldman. The only thing against him is his name. I must confess it, I don't like the name of Lazarus. It's low and doesn't sound genteel, not at all respectable. But after he's gone and done what's proper for the child, the boy could easily slip Lazarus into Lawrence. I'm told the thing's done often. No, Caudle, don't say that. I'm not a mean woman, certainly not, quite the reverse. I've only a parent's love for my children. And, I must say it, I wish everybody felt as I did. I suppose, if the truth was known, you'd like your tobacco-pipe friend, your pot companion, pretty man, to stand for the child. You'd have no objection. I thought not. Yes, I knew what it was coming to. He's a beggar, he is, and a person who stays out half the night. Yes, he does. It's no use your denying it. A beggar and a tippler. And that's the man you'd make godfather to your own flesh and blood. Upon my word, Caudle, it's enough to make a woman get up and dress herself to hear you talk. Well, I can hardly tell you, if you won't have Wagstaff or Pugsby or Sniggins or Goldman, or somebody that's respectable to do what's proper, the child shan't be christened at all. As for pretty man or any such raff, no, never. I'm sure there's a certain set of people that poverty's scratching from, and that Prettyman's one of them. Now, Caudle, I won't have my dear child lost by any of your spittoon acquaintance, I can tell you. No, unless I can have my way, the child shan't be christened at all. What do you say? It must have a name. There's no must at all in this case, none. No, it shall have no name, and then see what the world will say. I'll call it number six. Yes, that will do as well as anything else unless I've the godfather I like. Number six, Caudle. Ha! Ha! I think that must make you ashamed of yourself, if anything can. Number six, Caudle. A much better name than Mr. Prettyman could give. Yes, number six. What do you say? Anything but number seven. Oh, Caudle, if ever. At this moment, writes Caudle, little number six began to cry, and, taking advantage of the happy accident, I somehow got to sleep. End of chapter.